say thank you to the task force that was here that was a part of this at the end uh, this year, this term, this three year that we've been going, you've been, we all been going up there to DC and talking about this. Uh, the resolution of Navajo Nation presented to me here, which I'll be signing, is related to emergency approving it, the settlement agreement between the Navajo Nation and the United States and authorizing the Navajo Nation President, Attorney General, Deputy Attorney General, and the Attorney of Record to execute the settlement agreement. The first uh, signing that I did coming from Mr. Bates in the council is that to accept the agreement. We've done it on the day we met with, at the fire lot. And the, the council agreed, they went to their executive session, agreed that we should try to uh, not prolong there's a five-day period, uh, and we wanted to accept this uh, agreement as soon as possible for the nation, and that's what we execute uh, the fire route the next day I leave, with the uh, next uh, accepting the agreement came, and I signed it. I was, it was a root that chased me down up there, so uh, the executive protection route, the legislation, I signed it on of the big and uh, I was all doing two at the same time. I put things in my hand and I had to go through it again if it had some bad grease or something on it. But the attorney went on the way back to Albuquerque, so they took it back. They filed it in court. Dana, they filed it in court. Am I correct? That day when the attorney went back? Um, uh, President, as uh, they notified USDOJ that you would sign the settlement agreement. As soon as you uh, execute the legislation, everything is official and the time periods start to run and the court will be notified. It's, they are waiting for the execution of the settlement agreement and the legislation. And with this here, uh, we're going to sign the bay. We The clock is running. We're looking at 120 days to receive the court. That is the agreement, 120 days, um, the time the council approved the settlement, and you sign, or the council by resolution approves the settlement, and you uh, sign it the day start to take, 120 days, the dollars should be transferred. Well, at the time I signed the first one, the club, right now we have two or three days in. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. The, the main reason that I would like to say thank you for the foresight of the council because right now the money is, if we keep the money in D.C., it's changed interest up there. Who's making the interest? The money out the interest in the government. We like to get that money down here to the bank up and down so they should get interest off it. And that's what we want. That's priority, and that's why I went along with the council uh, settlement uh, legislation that came out. I didn't have to take it after. So we will receive the money in 120 days. It will be in our bank from there, I believe. In the meantime, from here to 120 days, we need to put a plan together. Uh, they call it, in, I call it, some people call it expenditure plan, but I will call, well, I think we need to call it investment plan. Please, yeah, well, an investment plan is a better word than expenditure. It seems like when you say expenditure, you're just going to throw all that money up in the air. No, let's look, take a look at the best word, the good investment. There's so many things we can do together. So with that, uh, let's, I just read the legislation or uh, resolution of the Navajo Nation. Resolution? You still call it resolution? Legislation? You legislation to resolution. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign the resolution. And uh, go ahead and sign the word paragraph. I hereby sign into law the full coin legislation pursuant to 2 NNC 1005 C10 on this day and the year 2014 up. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and put my John Doe on. There we have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, President. <clears throat> Thank you all of you for, for attending this historic uh, event today. The way I think we should all look at it is not only a, a victory for the Navajo Nation in terms of being able to get through this, but it's also sends a way back to Indian country to all the other tribes that are in the same situation as the Navajo Nation. It is a solution to, to what they're having to deal with. The fact that the Navajo Nation is the largest tribe sends a very strong message out. The at the end of the day, the light of the tunnel, what they are attempting to do, what the Navajo Nation has been able to conclude. I will say a very good, major thank you to the to the task force. We all did an outstanding job in the nation. Dana? Do we have two, three task force members with you guys? Yeah, we will. Uh, let me, let me, hold on a minute. Let me, uh, uh, I want to give something to somebody here. But uh, a few comments, you know. I, uh, I've been very, I'm, I'm sorry, like I say, uh, I to apologize to the lawmakers here. I, I've been very conservative. And uh, I've watched spending of my that with this the money that came through there, uh, we will be serving us out here. We will meet the needs of the people out there to whom you request them. Let's put that plan together to help the people out there. There's so much we can do out there. So I was worried about our next fiscal year budget, but that's all good. I'm glad to hear that. So first, 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 things, first things first, Dana. I know that, uh, I know Keith will, he'll probably say it his behalf, but let me just say it for Keith, that he had pushed this during our conference, and he pushed it, and I know you quit the Navajo Nation, and the way you went to private from lawyers, and you voted yourself to eight, ten hours, or how many hours that you worked for, and actually it was under contract, and so we still paid you, but you were with that lawyer pushing it. He was always on your tail up there too, to make sure that everything progressing forward. So we do appreciate your service for the executive branch that I will go ahead and, and appreciate you uh, for what you've done on behalf of the Navajo Nation and the Navajo people. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I know winter's not there yet, it's summer, but uh, <laughs> Dana, come on down. without uh, tears running down my face. I would like everybody to realize what an absolute historical landmark uh, accomplishment this is for the Navajo Nation. Um, there is a misconception sometimes that the Navajo Nation has not attempted to hold the United States responsible for their trust responsibilities. And that is just outright wrong. Uh, the Navajo Nation, through the Department of uh, Justice and Outside Counsel, has sued the United States approximately six different times for their trust responsibility um, over the years. This happens to be the last, uh, the final, at this point in time, um, litigation for historical wrongs, um, it's monumental. This is the largest uh, trust responsibility award from the United States in the history of Indian country. It, it, 
will never completely redress the, the wrongs done on prior generations, but it's going to allow some uh, opportunities for future generations. And I just thank you so much for allowing me uh, to work with you on this. Um, there's nothing better than sharing a victory with your friends. And you are all my friends. So much. Thank you. I just want to do a brief uh, historical synopsis of what this case involves. Back in the 1800s, when the United States was forming, there were court decisions that evolved that we called the Marshall Trilogy. In those cases, one of the court decisions named Johnson versus McIntosh, the case of Johnson versus McIntosh, the United States Supreme Court made a determination about the status of the newly discovered land. Based on that opinion, the court determined that the European nations that so-called discovered the Americas gained legal title to those lands by virtue of discovery. And it also determined the kinds of rights <coughs> Indian people have to their very lands that they've occupied from time immemorial. The court decided that Indian tribes have something called an Indian title of occupancy. And from that particular case evolved the concept that the federal government holds title to Indian tribal lands in trust for Indian tribal nations and members. As a result of these pronouncements, many numerous statutes, court determinations, treaties, have been signed based on that legal doctrine which evolves today to the United States holding our lands in trust for the Navajo Nation. And when they breach that trust, we have a right to make the United States accountable for mismanagement of these resources. And that's what this case is about. From the mid-1940s to today, we are holding the United States accountable for the mismanagement of our trust funds, of our lands, of our resources. And as Dana said, this is not full retribution for mismanagement of those resources. However, it is a settlement that we can also be proud of because we have to remember that uh, we pursue these cases and the courts of the United States and in many cases, as has been previously shown in Navajo 1 and Navajo 2 cases, we've been hometown, and we didn't get a cent out of those cases that uh, we spent a lot of dollars on. And I also want to say that this effort involved a lot of the resources of the Navajo people in terms of funding to the Navajo Nation Department of Justice where we were able to procure the services of outside legal counsel, the Nordhaus Law Firm, and I want to mention Alan Teradash, who uh, worked tirelessly to develop the legal strategy to pursue these particular claims. And his staff, Don Grove, and uh, Deidre Lujan, there was Tim Peckman, and other staff, men staff members, including Dana when she worked there, to help us pursue these particular claims. And then recently we uh, changed horses, so to speak, to uh, the Buckley Sandler Law Firm for Andy, Andy Sandler and Sam Buffone, who also assisted us in the Peabody litigation. So this is a long, hard, and fought battle in the courtroom with a lot of legal strategy. We spent an inordinate amount of time collecting evidence during the last eight years. And all of the divisions, the departments, the programs should also be commended for their staff spent a lot of effort 
and helping uh, and assisting to gather evidence in this particular litigation so we can have a successful conclusion. So I just want to commend everybody for their efforts and to thank everybody. Wonderful. It's a wonderful yeah. statement. And thank you, Division Directors, Alameda Division of Natural Resource and Agriculture Department, Greg White, and all your people, and all of the other the program divisions for the Division of the Nomination and the help out with the information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Bate. Task Force and Tag. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? 
Uh, could I ask uh, what the $554 million will be spent on? That's the $554 million question. <laughs> uh, are you going to have public hearings on how it's, be, it's going to be spent? We want to decide. You're always ahead of us. We don't think fast like you do. Sit down, we'll let you know. Um, one thing, unlike um, <laughs> prior judgments and settlements, um, unlike prior judgments and settlements uh, with the United States, there is no, the United States did not force the Navajo Nation to submit an expenditure plan. How the Navajo Nation determines to spend the money is a choice for the Navajo Nation. Uh, the legislation that was passed does not make that choice. It's a future choice. How, how long would the people, um, when will the people see the money actually in the tribal treasuries? Okay, uh, the agreement is that it will tra be transferred from the United States within 120 days of the execution of the legislation by the president. So. 100, within 120 days from now, it should be transferred to uh, the Navajo Nation's treasury. By Thanksgiving. Uh, I have not September. counted out um, 120 days yet, but one of the evaluations that uh, was done over and over again has to do with the fact that the President uh, mentioned while the money is with the United States, the Navajo Nation is not earning the interest. Um, that, at a very conservative rate of interest, about 8%, that equates to $1.2 million a week. So, the sooner there uh, that reinforced expediency, let's get the money here. Thank you. Sure. Just tell her how we're going to spend it. I don't know how you're going to spend it. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, come on, Mr. Yeah. Ned. I know you're coming. Uh, uh, we, we talked about uh, expenditure plan. I don't want to call it expenditure plan. Uh, okay. Our recommendation, let's, let's phrase it that way. It's a recommendation plan. Mm -hmm. Task force wanted to get together uh, in the coming weeks and uh, discuss how what we can do with that money. And uh, once we arrive on a, a plan, we can make a recommendation to the Navajo Nation Council and how, how we, we should uh, invest this money, spend some of it, maybe. All of this is going to come together and the task force feel like you know, they, they want to have a recommendation available for the Navajo Nation Council. So within the coming weeks, uh, we will be getting together and uh, talking about this. And we'll be involving the President's office as well as the Speaker's office uh, in, in formulating this uh, recommendation plan. So if, if the um, your constituents want to um, be involved, can they send comments, almost like you know the five-day public comment period, or you know, to the task force, or to you? Who would they send that to? Right, right. I do intend to uh, speak to my communities, and I will urge the other delegates to do as well. Uh, during the uh, negotiation, uh, we got clearance from uh, our attorneys and the uh, United States attorneys that we can just talk about the, uh, the lawsuit, and I did. And uh, I mentioned that we are in a negotiation with the United States where fund uh, mismanagement and resource mismanagement. Uh, so they're aware of it. So now the news out that uh, we have a settlement. So I'm going to go back to my communities. I'm going to ask him, okay, what are your recommendations? How do you see that we should spend this money? You know, I'll take their recommendation back to the task force and we'll talk about discuss that. Whatever, whatever we decide as we go along, in formulating this recommendation plan, we'll keep the communities informed about how we're going, how we're proceeding with all of this. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you.